Liam Rosen and Liam Grant here at Sky Magazine, our coverage of the European Ultimate Championships in Copenhagen. Liam, we're about to watch this power pool matchup between Russia and Switzerland. Had a bit of chance to talk to Anton Butikov, the captain of this Russian team before the game. How the process works in Russia is if you win nationals in that year, you are eligible to take as many players from your team as you want and then pick the players from the other teams to represent Russia. So the team that won was Real 5, and that was their first win in Russian Nationals. They picked the rest of their team. So there's a lot of Real 5 players, Jupiter, Sokol, Lucky Grass, Dolko Goruki. And Russia coming into this game Actually, both teams coming in with zero wins in the power pool. So they both basically need to win the next two games to get through. Yeah, you're right there, Liam. Both having a close losses there. The Russians back off a 13-11 loss to Belgium. And I think Switzerland losing to France by two. So a really tough power pool we have here. GB kind of sitting pretty at the top, but the other five teams battling it out for those other two, other three spots in the quarters, should I say. 
Um, so this is a must win for both teams if they want to keep their hopes alive. Russia in a slightly better position as Switzerland probably need to beat GP to stay in, but a win here is crucial to keep their campaign alive. So Russia picks up Tali Vasilyev on the pole and Switzerland comes out immediately, Liam in his own. Yeah, doing a kind of a four-man cup here, trapping on the sideline. We see a zone, this zone kind of often used by free speed, which is uh, a lot of the players on the Swiss team come from free speed, but the Russians splitting it there. And they've broken out. Russians now all very near their half-field line. Zarkovsky disc into Nikolaev all the way over the top, and this is going to be an easy catch for Mikhail Kudovin. Crispy, clean stuff there from the Russians and that beautiful cross-field buttery biscuit into the end zone. Nice play from the Russians. That's exactly what you want from your first double point. And lots of space. The Swiss not able to adjust and maintain that zone after half field. So could have been wide open in the end zone for Russia's first score. Yeah, I thought that four-man cup could have been a lot tighter. It was a throw straight through the middle of it. And once that happens, you're on the back foot the rest of the point. If you're going to go a four-man cup like that, the only way should be over it or a risky throw around it. So Vladimir Kochkin, the real five player, ready to pull off for Russia. And offside called by the Swiss team there, putting their arms above their head, uh, crossing them to signal that the Russians were offside. A uh, good decision to call that early on in the game because it puts pressure on the Russians to make sure they're onside from now on. So Kochkin will pull again. I uh, saw Kochkin play in Bruges with this, uh, with this Russian team where they probably didn't do as well as they hoped, but I thought this player was fantastic. Had some beautiful high release throws, which we might see later on in this game. Miguretto in for Switzerland. He's their main handler. Expect to see a lot from him. And a deep shot right away from the Swiss. So two quick points from both teams. Simon von Wartburg pulls it down. 1-1, one, one, we're all tied up. Two identical throws there from each team, choosing a kind of cross-field backhand. There's a light wind blowing from the camera towards the stand. So that throw being the easiest one to make. Uh, easy to throw it uh, cross field downwind. And expect Switzerland to look deep a lot. They're a spicy team, especially with Luke at the helm. But they definitely have the throws to play that style of offense. Von Wurtburg only in his third season of Ultimate and has already made the national team. He's got a track and field background and has a very high vertical jump. The throw there, Tobias von Bossen, former captain of free speed. Nico Miaretto on the pole. Russia will put it in right away to Vasilyev. A man defense with some poaching on the handlers. Avarin. Nikolaev. Toli. Looks like this is going to be a junk transition defense from the Swiss. They're counting out some numbers on the field. There's a call on the field. No hand signals here, I'm afraid, so not entirely sure what's going on, but I think it was a pick, pick call. Yeah, yeah, we see it there. Vasiliev. Pivoting into the middle. Finding Antonov, who sends it deep. 
The layout D from the Swiss. What a D from Elliot Murray. The crowd gives him props for that one. Yeah, goodness gracious me, what a bid. That hooked very low and zippy, but I thought it was going to be able to speed by the Swiss player, but it does well to get horizontal and get a fingertip to that. Murray, one of the American players on this squad. He's out of the University of North Carolina, has been living in Switzerland for two years. So coach Nico Miretto picks it back up. The longtime free speed player and captain. He's done some great work with the juniors programs over there in Switzerland. I was just talking to him about the problems of coaching and playing at the same time during the game. I was asking him, well, do you call lines? And he said, it's just impossible to call lines if you're trying to coach and play at the same time. Miaretto sends a bullet right in the end zone, not in. So all Switzerland has to do now is stay patient and pops it right in. Mario Jacomet with the reception and the goal. Yeah, great break point there from the Swiss. Uh, kind of playing upwind. Did very well to execute those break throws. Not a lot of space they're hitting into, but obviously confident and uh, they're very accurate, tight break throws. You can tell that both these teams know this is a must-win game and they're putting everything on the line here. The Swiss uh, may be disappointed to lose to Ireland uh, with their first game of the tournament. We're up 9-6 and end up losing 13-10. So not only did they lose, they lost by three, which could come into effect if there ends up being a three-way tie or whatnot. That'd be minus three with the Irish anyway. And I know in the first game against France today, they were hoping to win by four and they ended up losing by two. There was a bit of a disagreement on a call near the end of the game that really swung the match in France's favor. And France ended up winning 17-15, but that was a great game to watch. Very equal footing from both teams. And what a fantastic pull all the way to the back of the end zone. This could be a Callahan. Not quite there, but that's a goal for free speed on a windy day. Yeah, I don't know what Russia did with that pickup, just ballooning one in on the front of their end zone, putting it up there for everyone to take down, and uh, free speed saying, thank you very much, we'll take that break point. As you see the replay here, oh, Vasiliev won't be happy with that. He was left in no man's land, a hospital pass. Actually a bit of a travel, but went unnoticed as that disc just launch it, launches into the air. And yeah, I saw that travel there. I think, yeah. I don't think it affected play really yeah. though. There was no one around him. And it all starts with a good pull. Very many teams underestimate the strength that just having a good pull can give you. And you know, a lot of times it's a mental thing. So a handler will pick it up the back of the end zone and suddenly panic because they realize they're so far back and can't get it out. Nico Miretto pulls the disc for Switzerland. That's going to be a roller. And it looks like the Swiss will set up that zone yet again. It's the four person cup. Russians trying to crash, get it off the line. Kochkin, Podolski, Scubers over to the middle. Russia all the way now on the far sideline. Kochkin looking to go over the top. Podolsky again. Yeah, a bit better now for the four-man cup. Still getting little crashes in that are catching him out, but that's the throw they want to force, that scuba. Well got it up by the Russians. And there you go, one throw after, there's a rush decision and Miretto sends it deep right away. Nice coverage from the Russians and that's a tough throw, a bit of a forced one there. He could have holstered it and waited for it to come underneath. 
Uh, yeah, hard earned D by the the Swiss then and thrown away rather too easily. Yeah, this four-man cup, I really remember it in the windmill final a few years ago when it was uh, Free Speed versus Bologna. And they just squeezed out the Bologna team, ended up just trying to huck through it. We'll see what the Russians can do. Doing this little pop, which uh, works only so much for gaining yards. And the Swiss have a very tall team, so they're putting some of their tallest players in that cup. Yeah, I like that decision. You see most teams putting their tall people in the back, but I think it works better to put your uh, smaller people, maybe you can cover more yards behind the back, and it's the big lads in the front. A little bump there. So foul call, play stops, and we'll restart with a check. Podolski it launches another high disc. Save though by Kochkin. Nikolaev through the center of the cup to Butikov. Podolski near layout from the Swiss. Kochkin sends it deep. Very nice reception amid pressure from Miretto. Yeah, the Russian play, player there getting the better read, but had to be physical to hold his ground and get up there. A good play by the Russians. They are given a second opportunity, they took it well. If you're listening here on Skyde's broadcast, send us some messages on Twitter. You can find me at Skyde underscore Liam Rosen. That's L-I-A-M-R-O-S-E-N. So pull coming off from Russia, Toli Vasilyev. Probably the best known player of this Russian team. He, after starting to play in Russia, one of the first players to start playing in the country, moved to Canada where he had a very successful season. Last season with Toronto Rush in the American Ultimate Disc League and Toronto Goat in the USA Ultimate Club Series. Switzerland out in a side stack. And we'll send it deep. And that's a very nice deep shot. Ooh, and I thought that was just perfection out of the playbook. Clearly uh, something they practiced and a little bit of a wrist me there. Wrist, uh. <laughs> Speaking of wrist, that was the player that <laughs> yeah, nearly a, caught it. A bit of a misread there. The wind just catching it. Yeah, but Vasiliev, one of the best defensive players on the planet right now. He's just uh, such a crafty man. So Switzerland back in their zone. Russia really having a hard time moving it off that sideline. They're gonna need to put it all the way over the top. Stall count getting very high. They're trying that scuba again. It's just a matter of time where that won't work anymore. Vasilyev looking for options. It's going over the top again. Back to Vasilyev. Not gaining much yards here, the Russians. There we go, with the hammer, Vasiliev breaking it out. But what they need from there is very fast movement. So Tully now near the brick mark. Takes a bit of a blade to Arsenev. Vasiliev, Putikov. Looks like a pick was called before that throw. So 
play did stop. Bit of wind here in the stadium today, and the conditions have been better than in past days. Had a lot of sun today. There are some ominous clouds in the background. It's supposed to rain later today. Vasiliev hucks it. Miretto though, there, and gets the D without too much of a problem. Switzerland moves it back. Miretto again, thinks about the deep shot, and there it is. Frequent target, Robin Brudalin left uncovered, and that's not a man you want to leave near the end zone. Yeah, those two players have great chemistry, Luca and Robin. They're always looking out for each other. Uh, they have a radio frequency that nobody else is cued into. They know exactly what's happening about a second or two before anyone else does, and Luca putting it on a dime. Two players that have come up throughout the years from Free Speed's junior programs. Luca's brother, Nicholas, doing a great job. getting some of the juniors organized, and this has transferred well into this team where a fair amount of the team actually does come from free speed. In the past, it was flying angels on top of the Swiss scene, but a lack of new youth players has meant that the older players have chosen now to play masters. Yeah, we have the likes of Nas, David Moses, uh, Lorenz on that Swiss Masters team, which we'll be seeing later on today, taking on the GB Masters. Definitely in contention for winning uh, the Masters division a lot stronger than previous years. And the four-man cup again from free speed. The Russians really got to figure out how to, how to beat this one before the end of the game or it's gonna be a long game from them. Help defense from Switzerland. And great positioning by Marco Pfister to get his body in the way. And there appears to be a foul call. And we'll, we'll take a look here on the replay, Liam. That actually may be a legitimate foul. At first glance, I thought that Pfister had better position than he did, but he actually did come over the top. Yeah, it seemed like the Russian player almost backed out a little bit there. Almost maybe he called dangerous play or... Right. Possibly a good call because it looked like they were going to collide. That will be contested, though. We'll try and keep a neutral... Uh, perspective for the Swiss here. Tolly's disc eventually picked up by the Russians. Nikolaev, inside break, way down low, and that disc far too low for his receiver. Yeah, I think the receiver actually got his hands to it, but just, um, it went, I think it went over his hands. He's kind of slipped and falling as it went up, and the disc is straight up. This actually rebounded off a player's foot. Russia quickly goes the other way. Tolly with the blade. Double coverage from the Swiss. Miretto doing a good job there, but it's caught. Swiss with numbers on defense. There's a call, though, downfield. Yeah, I think the disc will stay with this Russian player after making that astonishing grab. But obviously something else happened on the field and just going to be reset again. The big two-handed sky there just had a better position to attack the disc than his Swiss counterpart. Totally nice field vision, doing a good job to find that one. As play restarts, back to Vasiliev. Throwing through the foul. And Russia works it into the end zone. 4-3. Switzerland still on top. Yeah. Vasiliev is such a talisman for this Russian team. Everything going through him. And 
they still haven't really figured out that zone to try and risky passes, but if it's Vasiliev trying those hammers as cross field, you think it's going to be okay. So Russia popping it right into the corner of the end zone. Nikolai Nikolaev, the Jupiter player. With the goal for the Russians. The core strength and balance of Vasiliev there to actually get that throw off. He's pivoting into the backhand and just rotates his body to get that flick off. It's so difficult just to keep your form. And a very smart play as well. It's something you see a lot, at least in the United States and Canada, is playing through contact. So in USA Ultimate Rules, contact actually drops the stall count to zero. So it's a very, very powerful call. If there's any contact at all, you immediately have a brand new stall count. Miretto with the disc, Swiss out in another side stack from Barson. Keza deep to Severin Reese. Free speed making it look easy. 5 3. This is some great spectators' ultimate. These lads don't mess around. A bit different to the GB team we saw earlier who were patient and just trying to work in with break throws and swings. These teams like the jacket. And if you if you do it enough, you get pretty good at it. Yeah, they have great timing. They wait for the right moment in general, uh, having some mistakes. But it was the same thing in the France game. Both teams working it up, waiting for the right moment to throw that huck. Yeah, I love that throw as opposed to the flat leading flick. Just a bit more around in it. Makes it more difficult for uh, the defender to make a play. I think Liam Rosen may not have internet, but I have my data. So if you want to get in touch with us, you can tweet at Sky Magazine. I uh, would love to hear some facts about these two teams or any more information you'd like to tell us. We're all ears. Nikolaev looking for the up line. Kochkin. Kochkin. The high release fake. Just outside of the end zone. Sarkoivsky looks like a strip or a foul will be called. It's no call. That's going to be a turnover. Yeah, that is just sliding out of his hands. Take another look on the replay. Ooh. And that's a hand block. Another deep shot. Wide open near the zone. A dump and a score. Efficient, perfect offense from Switzerland. And Russia having no answer to this deep game from the Swiss. You think they'd mix it up maybe a zone or try fronting them a bit more, but uh, the Swiss want to play the deep game and the Russians is giving them that. Talking to captain Anton Budikov before the game, he said one of the plans for the Swiss team would be to try to force them under because he knew they liked to throw deep. But so far, the Russians either not able to or not correctly executing that strategy. Um, some treats coming in there. We know that the Swiss national team isn't free speed, but uh, a lot of players coming from that. We know there's some crazy dogs in there. Yeah, the story of the crazy dogs is a remarkable one. This is a city, Liam, of stands, about 6,000 inhabitants, real close to Lucerne, Switzerland. And it may be the community in Europe with the most amount of ultimate players per capita. They've produced a large number of very, very skilled junior players.
despite being a very small city, only 6,000. Uh, and the, their Crazy Dog Stands is the third best team in Switzerland behind Flying Angels and Free Spirit. Yeah, I think Aaron Riedel plays Riedle. Mm -hmm. Plays with the Crazy Dogs, unfortunately out for this game, getting a bit of a concussion in the game against France and has been instructed to sit this one out. Big loss for this free speed team. He's a fantastic player. Uh, famed for that incredible grab in Lecco. I think uh, across Morgan Hibbert. Probably the play of the tournament. Uh, he also picked up with the Irish team Rebel at Bruges, at Tom's Tourney a few months ago. I think Crazy Dogs didn't get a bid, I think is what he said to me. Surprised to hear that. But the Rebel team were delighted to have him and he got one over in speed, free speed as well. So free speed making up the majority of this team, but as we said, there are players from Crazy Dogs and Flying Angels as well. This is a younger Swiss team. There's only four players returning from Maribor in 2011. Uh, all of them free speed players. And it looks like Switzerland will come out in a zone again. This is going to be their transition defense. Russia just content to swing it around until they transition out. Vasilyev. Finding Nikolaev. All the way across. To Elisiv. Nikolaev breaks to Tali. Vasilya, that disc is too high. It's going to be brought down by Sergey Barkin, who sends it deep. Vasilyev is there, though, for the help defense and rips it out of the air. What a play from Tali Vasilyev. Yeah, textbook stuff from the player there. He read that one coming a while away, drifted off, and uh, picks up that one. And that's what they need to do some more help defense to shut down this. Uh, Swiss deep game. Just swung to the other side of the field from the Russians. Not much movement coming out there from the stack. And a layout D from Nico Mioretto. And he's looking for the end zone shot every time he gets the disc. Mioretto swings to his brother, Luca. Back to Nicholas. Trips up a bit. And suddenly Switzerland very still able to get the reset off. Back to Luca. Luca, the upline shot near D from Tolly. Luca again, still on that far sideline. Pumps it in. What a find from Luca Mioretto. How did he ping that one across the field? Threading it through about five or six players. My word, what a throw. Luca, one of the premier players in Switzerland. He's actually gone over to the United States and played. Unfortunately, he was injured, but made the roster of North American team Toronto Goat a few seasons ago. Wow, a flash of inspiration there from uh, the maestro Luca. Such a tight window. And you, you see him plotting that throw a mile away. So very nice play so far from the Swiss. They really want to advance to the quarterfinals. 7-3 over Russia. Yeah, I also spotted Luca in Santa Cruz last year playing with Boost. He didn't actually go with them to nationals or regionals, but I think he was probably it was on 50-50 whether he's going to go or not but came over and played a, a tournament with boost their kind of tryout warm-up tournament in santa cruz and they did very well there but didn't go to regions with them yeah he told me he his father actually is and works in the airline so he gets free flights and was just looking for a team with whom he could get quite a bit of playing time in the u.s russia Going the other way, puts it 
near the end zone now. Makovetsky looking for a dump. Finding Antonov. Antonov too far. Furious at his receiver. But Switzerland another chance. And just a misread by Dmitry Makovetsky. Murray with the disc back in. Von Barson thinking about the huck. It's not there. Von Barson again, flick huck. What a bullet! Right to the back of his receiver. And the crowd loving that one. Barson always looking to huck it deep. Yeah, that was a filthy flick there. The arsenal of throws that these uh, Frisbee players can generate is absolutely unbelievable. This colossal stuff. Finding the channels for those deep throws where no one else would even think of looking and executing them so well. We saw at the picking up the dead disc, we saw the Russians kind of changing up a little bit with that whole stack to two guys on the open side, trying to shut down the under while on the break side wing, one man standing deep and one guy standing under the break side. So trying to play more of a little bit of a help defense, trying to set up some double coverage. But the Swiss reset it. And then once the disc was moved around a little bit, they had that free space again. So Linus Bercher with the score for Switzerland, taking this team into timeout. You can see one of the Swiss players on crutches. There he, although not making the team during the tryout process, volunteered to stay on as the team manager. And the captain said he was a very, very big help in letting them captain and coach despite playing. It's not an easy job to organize a team. So having a team manager, very helpful to keep the team on track. Yeah, often the case for injured players get uh, designated coaching roles or taking stats or scouting. Even though you may not be playing, you can still really help your team. Another look at this D from Vasiliev, probably the play of the game so far, and then the Hawk from, from Barson. Right to his players back. Yeah, this is the Swiss team move grown to know and love. It hasn't really shown its uh, true colors in the first pool. Not able to carry any wins into this power pool. And that disc will just touch the back line, so it will be brought up to the front of the end zone by Tali Vasiliev. Vasiliev, when asked before the game if he had anything wanted to mention to the Russian fans at home. He described the Russian team as a faceless army. Kochkin, travel call, looking for the high release. He's got to go over the top here. Finally gets it back to Vasiliev. Vasiliev, hammer out of the cup. Cross field, Kochkin pops it through. And Russia doing a very good job at disc movement now. And the double D from the Swiss boys puts the disc back into the hands. A scuba from Luca though, a bit too optimistic. Disc space as Russia gets another chance. Vasiliev, Kochkin gaining some big yards there on the underneath cut. Kochkin, the flick out to space. It's going to be a jumping match here in the end zone. And there may be a foul call on this one. It looks like Kochkin got rescued there from that crossfield throw. One that I saw him execute so well in Bruges, but 
Not doing it very well there. Bit of argy bargy under the disc. Um, yeah, there was some shoving there. I mean, that's that's a good no call in my opinion. It's not a very good throw. Uh, I don't think the person who caught the disc impeded anyone. Whether, yeah, I, I just don't see the foul there. It seemed like the Russian player was slowing down and the Swiss guy kind of got a trap beside him and didn't have a good uh, run up to attack to this, but really kind of a misread by both of them, kind of trailing over their head and the Russian player cleaning up. So the players here will take a minute and talk it out. Remember, there are no game advisors in effect at the European Ultimate Championship, so all play is self-officiated. From a commentator's point of view, I really miss them. Not necessarily for their advice or whatever, but purely for hand signals on the sideline. It was great to have them. They'd, you'd know immediately what's going on in the field. Uh, and they'd also make sure calls didn't go on too long. They'd inform the players that it's gone 30 seconds or so. It's time to uh, send it one back if it's not decided. And yeah, glad to see a goal call there. Great spirit from the Swiss. Well known for their top class spirit. Uh, the Swiss Open when they won the European Beach Championships also won spirit. So we really respect them for that, be able to play at a top level and be very spirited. Russia, even with getting the goal there, still has looked a bit shaky early, especially against the Swiss four-man cup. They're going to need to get it together coming into half. It just seems like Vasiliev is playing every point. I don't know if I've seen him take one off. and Maybe because he's playing more of a handler role, he's not busting himself on D as much. Pull coming down from Swiss in a horizontal stack. Robin Brudelin out to space. For Von Barsen, and what does he do? Send it deep again to Severin Rees, the big time deep cutter. So Switzerland sends it into half. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, Liam. And surely the Russians got to be kicking themselves. It's the same play every time that first little lateral cut, opening it up for the Swiss. They're kind of mids who have those deep throws and then just sending it. Yeah, the Swiss offense is very, very much an efficient offense looking for that very first pass and then not afraid to huck to their very athletic deep cutters. In fact, Aaron Riedler, who we mentioned is out, is generally the target of that. Severin Reese filling in for him a couple times in this game. Von Barsen, who hucked that disc. Fun fact about him, he was talking to some of the captains before the game, they said he's frequently mistaken for Prince William on the streets of <laughs> Switzerland. Down here at EUC 2015 in Copenhagen, this is Sky Magazine's coverage with Liam Grant and Liam Rosen on the mics. We're going to take a short break. Catch in with us after halftime.
Commentators are on, commentators are on. Coming into the second half on Sky Magazine's coverage of the European Ultimate Championships in sunny Copenhagen. Russia is going to pull off to Switzerland. Switzerland on offense after a very solid first half, Liam Grant. Yeah, Switzerland just looked unstoppable with that deep game, and we'll see what the Russians do now. Ah, it looks like they're straight down with a zone. I think it's a good call. Uh, Three-man couple with Vasiliev putting on the force. Yeah, definitely a double team there. Uh, the Swiss player doing lots of pointing. So, Switzerland, hard time getting it off the line. Finally get it back up to Mioretto. Mioretto, big hammer, brutal in near misread, but gets it on the second attempt. And poor defense there in the end zone from Russia. Allows Switzerland to get an easy goal, Olivier Goglet putting Switzerland up 10-4. Yeah, that zone didn't quite work for the Russians, but I think it's good to try something different. They really need to do that. That's probably the first point we've seen where Swiss is just send it deep, so that's what you gotta do. You gotta keep asking different questions of this offense, and eventually you might find something that trips them up and gets you a few breaks. One of my friends always says, never lose a game without trying zone, which I think is a great motto. Take a look again at that replay. Russian player just looking the other way. Gogle with the goal for Switzerland. So Switzerland so far a walk in the park. Up 10-4 in this game to 17. Big pull from Luca Mioretto. Four-time appearance at the windmill wind-up pole competitions. He's probably got the best backhand in Europe. Yeah, I would have to agree, he's definitely one of the best. We see Vasiliev, who, as far as I can tell, has been going Iron Man this whole entire game, realizes that this is a must win for the Russians. And uh, he's happy to just keep on playing. Russia into the center, looking a bit shaky. Pudikov, Kochkin. Disc floating up in the air. Suddenly, wind has increased quite a bit. Antonov off the line. Some high discs from the Russians, but they are coming down with them. 
Their gloves certainly helping them with that. Nikolaev across the field. Too high for Vasiliev as Miyareto. Funny thing about Luka Miyareto, he's always playing with a smile on his face. If you look at him, especially when he wants to huck, that smile just comes out. And again, just threads the needle through the middle. Very impressed with the play of Luka Miyareto in this game. Miyareto brothers working in the handler set. Bit of dish and bolt, the upline pass to Nico. And the easy score again from Switzerland. So Switzerland absolutely routing the Russians so far. Some delicious Swiss cheese there dished out for everyone to eat. Beautiful offense. Again, may do something different and no problem doing so. We see a bit more of a handler weave from the two brothers. Great communication. And uh, eventually able to find that space using the break side. The Swiss team didn't come in with as high expectations as maybe they would have in 2011 in Maribor where they finished fourth. Although it was a disappointing finish for that team. They were coming in with all the firepower to become champions of Europe and lost in the semifinals to Sweden. 13-12, that was a game in which I believe they were down 10 or 11 to four at one point. Came all the way back and just lost on game point. Yeah, both those nations kind of in a redevelop uh, redevelopment now. Sweden, not the same team that won four years ago and uh, the Swiss team as well, redeveloping their squad, but a bright future ahead of Switzerland by the looks of things. See the arrowhead zone again from the Swiss. Barkin. Ivanov, Russia trying out some new line alignments. Disc too far for Butikov. Having to lay out for it, not able to make that grab. Switzerland now on offense. Elliot Murray. Launches that disc up. Looks like he might have actually been fouled on that throw, but comes down with it anyway. So Swiss now in their own end zone. Need to get it out. Laser flick up to Harold Ola. Fur. Dickman. Dickman inside break. And the precision of the Swiss throws is almost as impressive as the Switch watches. <laughs> Foul on the play, it looks like. Russia calling the push off. Where was this Swiss, Swiss offense all week? Um, they had some tough losses against Ireland and Belgium and they weren't playing like this in, this in these games. And I really think if they can come away with a win here and then another one in their last power pool game, going into that, they should give them, give them some confidence to attack the quarterfinals. Yeah, the big thing there, the last pool game is GB. That's going to be a very, very tough win but I'm sure they'll give it all they got. Switzerland, blade over the top of the stack. Too far. So Russia's gonna take their time, pick up, and go the other way with it. Bit better defense from Russia there. Do we see the Swiss flags in the audience? Lots of Swiss supporters joining us today. Yeah, that's a big plus, all right. And Russia really taking their time here. Trying to iron out some of the mistakes. 
great, great slow motion job by our production team there to track the disc going into the sideline. Shout out to all of our cameramen and production assistants and leaders running the broadcast today for Sky Magazine and Elisa, a Finnish, American, British, and Irish co-production. <laughs> yeah, Butikov. They've been absolutely fantastic, Liam. Uh, probably some of the best production Ultimate has ever seen. Uh, the cameramen and women working tirelessly, and we really appreciate all their hard work. It's been fun hanging out with the, the Finnish folk as well. And a nice looking deep shot from the Russians. Unfortunately, receiver just not there to track it down. And Russia just looks confused, discombobulated, bamboozled. <laughs> Don't run out of superlatives now. You gotta save a few of those for later. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Switzerland called a timeout here or something. At this point, getting a bit scrappy and they need to settle themselves again. But they uh, bring it back in. Murray swings far side to Dickman. Back to Murray, breaks. Thinking about the deep shot. It's not there. Russian players tumbling all over the place. Just check back in quite low, but makes the grab, and Switzerland will finally put it deep. Harold Ola making the athletic grab, but loses it on the come down. Yeah, it's landing heavy on his shoulder there. Had to really throw his body at it. And a difficult one to keep in the hands when you're hitting the ground that hard. So Anton Budikov, the captain of Russia, picks up the disc, finds Podolsky on the reset. Podolsky, backhand break to Budikov. Budikov sends it deep. And it's gonna be a foot race here for the D. Very nice position established by Tora Harms. And yeah. Harms, even though it didn't really have to jump to get that D. Yeah, did very well bodying his man out and to keep him away from the disc. Important to note, Vasiliev not on the line right now. Taking one of his first breaks of the game, Ola, the dentist, with the reception. And another goal for Switzerland. Tora Harms doing work on that point. The cutter from the Flying Angels. This is uh, quite the goal difference for the Swiss right now, which could come into play. It's uh, hard to do all the mathematics for these situations, but I think if Russia was to beat Ireland and Ireland was to lose to France, that game 6-6 last time I checked. So still a lot of things to be settled, but hypothetically, if Ireland was to lose to France and then Russia was to beat Ireland, I think there could be a three-way tie between Switzerland, Russia, and Ireland, all with one win. I think that can potentially, could potentially happen. And if so, goal difference come into play. So Ireland beating Switzerland by three. But uh, currently, if they're the, able to hold this sort of lead, they'll have a massive goal difference going into that. And that pull, big chance at getting in that lead as that lands right in the corner of the field with a four-man cup from Switzerland and immediate turnover from Russia. Yeah, able to employ their Chokin Hagen defense there. Miretto has that disc stripped out of his hands. So 
So Miretto guarded by Kochkin. Looking for the around. Flips it right up to the end zone. To his brother, Luca. So Switzerland with yet another goal, 13-4. Liam, out of all the games we've streamed so far, it's hard to imagine that this one may be the most unequal. Yeah, really surprised. I was banking on this one being a nail-biter. And we're not really seeing that, but we're seeing some Swiss perfection, which is beautiful to watch. You and see Sw Luca really enjoying himself out there. Switzerland playing without one of their main, if not their main deep receiver, Aaron Riedle, who, as we mentioned, had a concussion in the France game just before this. But hopefully he'll be okay to play in their next power pool game against GB. Yeah, even uh, the way the Swiss are playing, it'd still be a very difficult ask to uh, beat GB. So I'm sure they'll be watching the Ireland-Russia game intently, which is tomorrow. If Ireland win that, I think the Swiss is just out, out and so the Russians and Ireland will go through. If they were to lose, um, the Swiss could be back in it. Russia working it around this four-man cup. Vasiliev back on the field. Flicks through to Kochkin. Antonov to Nikolaev. Antonov rips one in to the end zone, so Russia gets a quick hold. 13-5 Switzerland. For all the latest scores, you can check out the tournament score reporting website euc2015.ultimatecentral.com just look we've got what looks like an absolute cracker going on Spain versus Denmark in the mixed division 14-13 as of last results Slovakia Italy also in mix 16-14 for Slovakia Finland versus the Czech Republic 10-8 for Finland In the open division, France nine, Ireland eight. Keep sending us those shout outs on Twitter. I'm gonna now log into my Sky Liam Rosen account. You can find me Skyd, S-K-Y-D underscore Liam Rosen, L-I-A-M-R-O-S-E-N. Very nice pull from the Russians, and they'll come out in the zone. It's a three-man cup. Looks like to be some sort of call from Van Barzen. And if he's Prince William, I'm probably Prince Harry. You guys could make a fantastic team out there, Liam. Another foul call. Interesting to see Vasiliev taking the mark in this zone. I don't know how he's entire. The man uh, is a machine. You think if he's going to play with a point, maybe goes a deep roll, but wants to really grab the bull by the horns in this one. This goes up. Ripped deep to Severin Reese. But it's deed by Nikolai Nikolaev. He'll wait for Anton Budikov, the captain, to run down and take this one. So both teams still playing right from the corner. Budikov gets the very nice up line shot. And Russia, not a very big hucking team, Liam. They haven't looked to huck very much, perhaps knowing that they just don't have the deep advantage that the Swiss do. On the other hand, they just haven't been able to work it up easily and have been launching high throws like that that are easily deed this time by Simon von Wartburg. Does not spell success for the Russians. Mm. 
You know, the Russians need to keep their head up because although it doesn't mean they're entirely out to lose this, they'd have to have a serious win over Ireland to uh, get the goal difference right. So every point still matters to them and they need to approach the game that way, a point at a time. From Barson, a gigantic hammer to Severin Reese. Mama, there goes that man. What a shot from Van Barson stuck on the line and Reese just in the perfect position. Come with the man, come with the, uh, the hour. Colossal hammer there from the assist player. He's having a storm over game. Just, I don't know how many assists he's racked up, but a lot for this game. And he'll be chuffed with that one. That one, very pretty. So Prince William with the hammer. Let's take another look at this one. Absolutely massive and Russian defender just playing a little bit too far off in the zone. Switzerland gets the point, 14-5. Yeah, that man deserves a crown for that one. More than a crown, I'd say he deserves a whole Swiss franc. <laughs> <laughs> Switzerland with the pull again on this sunny day in Copenhagen, Denmark. You're watching Sky Magazine's coverage of the European Ultimate Championships. Switzerland in the four-man cup position. Tolly just throwing up the silky scubers, but it's an absolute misread as Switzerland looks to move it fast to the other and other in the field, Luca Miretto. Big disc into Tora Harms. So easy from Switzerland, 15-5 from Les Suisses. And totally just can't keep it together. He seems very frustrated now. He feels his whole championship slipping away from him. And just so much weight put on him as best player in Russia and certainly one of the most renowned, probably the most renowned Russian player around the world. Having played so much time in Toronto and coming back to Europe to help this team out in the championships as he's done so many times before. Yeah, Liam, you win games on the field, but you lose games in your heart. And right now, I'm not feeling much heart for this Russian side. They look uh, dead and buried. Need to get their chins up. Need to get to sing some songs. Definitely a thing. The Irish can't do a lot. And Belgians definitely saw Canadians on the 23 that if uh, you're losing a few points, get singing, get positive, and uh, get that uh, right body atmosphere going. The mental game aspect of Ultimate is very much underappreciated I think I've noticed that in my own personal game with teams I've played with just creating positive vibes doing things like visualization or aspects that can really help with your game so Russia now coming back moving it very quickly against the Swiss zone Nikolaev Butikov into the middle to Kudobin Nikolaev Vasilyev. Very nice offense so far from the Russians. And a drop, just fatal lack of concentration from Russia at this point. Miretto. Swiss on the far sideline. Back to Miretto. Pops one over to Elliot Murray. Biacha and Andermott now with it, looking for the dump. Back to Miretto. Switzerland with a man streaking deep. Biacha's going to take that shot. A very nice D from Vladimir Kochkin, the real five player, to knock that one away. Kochkin just about able to get a claw to that one.
that pass a little too telegraphed from the Swiss. And Russia again really taking their time here as they walk this up. Let's have a bit of a shout out to our sponsor, shall we? VC Ultimate, Look Fly providing us with these sweet jerseys. And many thanks as well to the organizers of this tournament. This has been a very, very well run event so far. We felt very supported, especially in contrast with Leco last year's another fatal mistake. Yeah. from the Russians. Yeah, big thanks to VC as the VC flag flails in my face. Uh, they put on a good party last night, giving out some beers and bacon to everyone. I never actually saw any bacon. Was there bacon? There was bacon. There. I must. You must have eaten it all before I got there. I might have just done that, but I'm recovering from an injury. I need all those proteins and whatnot. Yes, uh, all the proteins. <laughs> Miretto looking for any option near D from the Russians. Miretto flicks one end to the end zone. Very reminiscent of his brother. You can tell they've been throwing a lot together throughout their lives. Switzerland, just pure absolute domination. Not much more you can say about that. Yeah, great bid there by the Russian player, but reflexes of a cat to respond from the Swiss. And then another toe in the line. They just look... Fantastic right now, the Swiss team. Where, where was this performance earlier on? Because, you know, the Russians losing 13-11, I think, to the Belgians earlier, who uh, beat the Swiss. And uh, the Swiss putting up a much bigger score against this team than the Belgians. So you see in this power pool and the group earlier that anything can happen, that if a team starts playing well, things start clicking, anyone can beat any team. And if the Swiss play like this, they, they can really bring it to the GB team, definitely. Yeah, that should be should be a very nice game. Swiss fans definitely loving it. The fact that their team is playing so relaxed. They have a lot to be proud of for this one as Switzerland will look to put this game away. Game to 17 has been a very quick one here at only 72 minutes of game time. Swiss out in another zone. It's been working so far and totally Vasiliev having to do so much work for his team, which just looks absolutely frazzled. Finally on a bit of a run. You know, maybe it wouldn't hurt to open up the field a bit more with some hucks as they have one right there, but it's trailing too far away. Yeah, I can't really pick out anyone in this team that has the same throws as the Swiss. Obviously, Vasiliev is his, is his own beast, but the rest of the Russians don't seem to have those throws in the wind. Uh, for Koshkin, I definitely saw him throw it in Bruges, but he has these high lofty hawks that just aren't going to cut it in this, this wind. Risky so pass on the Russians. Speaking oh, of the high Callan. and lofty, there's a call downfield a couple of near Callahan's in this game could be on the mark as Jacomet checks the back in Jacomet finding his receiver Switzerland trying to get it off the line very nice inside break. The Swiss have depended quite a bit on those. Not much offensively going on for Switzerland at the moment. Their cutters are very deep. Marco Pfista finally getting something going. But uh, his throw just floats too high. Swiss are resting three of their players. I was talking to um, Coach Miaretto before the game. They have su such a big roster with 25. They actually rest three players every game on sort of a rotation just so they make sure that everyone gets some reps and people stay fresh for the other games. So only playing with 21 this game. Kochkin with the disc to Vasiliev. Vasiliev, big fakes. 
flick into Andreev. Podolsky. Andreev. Nice backhand break to Antonov. But certainly nothing looking easy for Russia. Another backhand break to Vasiliev, who puts up another backhand break. Again, there'll be a foul call on the throw. As the sun beats down in Copenhagen, we've been a bit lucky so far. I saw on the forecast there was a chance of rain today, but it looks like has not come. Vasiliev into Kudobin. Upline streak from Podolski. Very nice backhand break from the Russians. Toli finally finds the end zone. So Russia 16-6 and Switzerland with a chance to put it away now on offense. Yeah, you'd like them to just finish this one off, show the play they've shown all day. I like the 21 players, three resting idea. Often if you have a big squad, 24-25, and everyone's trying to play an even amount, sometimes you don't really get into the game. You're, you're not really touching the disc enough that when you do get it, you're not confident in your throws. You haven't been throwing really that many passes. So it's good to have the 21 and three resting. Uh, this open division, very competitive. Most teams will play 10 games, so you also want that big roster as well, especially if you pick up injuries along the way. I think the Irish team playing with 17 now. Mixed team maybe playing with 16, 15. Very difficult to uh, keep up that intensity. Andre Budikov, brother of Captain Anton Budikov. With the pole, it's a short pole down on the brick mark. Yoretto putting some very nice touch on those discs. From Barson pivoting, throws the dump away. Again, every point matters for this Russian team. A chance to break here. Disc in from the Russians, some physical defense from Von Wortburg. Defensive specialists, again, that track and field background coming in handy. Miretto bared out by Von Wortburg. <laughs> and his dump calling for the poach. Miretto just not wanting to throw it. The deep shots just haven't been open so far for the Swiss. Miretto getting free up line. Very hard to defend as a handler. Pumps it through to Oliver Gaugler. Von Wartburg. Dumps back to Von Barson. Backhand break. Miretto now just five meters away from putting this game in the can, and he does so. Fairly easily, Dennis Hotz, as the Swiss contingent in the stands, applauds the win. So Switzerland taking down Russia 17-6 in this open power pool game. Now, Liam, we don't quite know what implications this will yet have on the schedule, but we'll certainly keep you updated. If you go to euc2015.ultimatecentral.com, you can 
look at the latest scores and see what the point differential was. It will definitely come into effect this next open round as Russia takes on Ireland and Switzerland takes on GB. But our next game is going to be our first Masters game of the tournament. We're going to stream GB Open Masters versus Denmark Open Masters. Two very strong teams with some absolute legends on both sides, including the legend, Nassim Bey. Or is he playing for Switzerland? He's playing for Switzerland, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, I think I made that mistake <laughs> earlier as well. And yeah, it's the Danish Masters versus the GB Masters. So, Liam Grant and Liam Rosen for Sky Magazine signing off. Я не знаю, сейчас буду выяснять.